okay so uh, this is 18th lecture and we will continue our discussion on the spheres at higher renewables okay so if you recall in the uh, previous two lectures we have uh, specifically talked about only the rigid sphere so in case of rigid spheres we will not be having the presence of any internal circulation so today also first two three slides we will simply continue our discussion on rigid spheres only by accounting for the heat transfer parameters and then we will quickly shift to the fluid particles here we will be having actually presence of internal circulation also uh, within the spheres okay so typically if you see uh, one of the easiest way to characterize uh, the heat transfer characteristics uh, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of dimensionless quantity is actually nusselt number okay so as you have a rigid spherical object either flow is happening over the spherical object or spherical object is actually falling in a uh, stagnant fluid so we will be having some relative motion in between the spherical object and the surrounding fluid so there will be certain bulk motion of the fluid so as we are having bulk motion of the fluid because of this the uh, predominant phenomenon of heat transfer will be convection and considering the convection heat transfer uh, one of the easiest way uh, with which so if you have to calculate heat transfer rate of heat transfer then it will be nothing but equal to h a times t surface minus t fluid okay so here we see that our heat transfer coefficient is one of the important parameter that we need to estimate if we have to determine the rate of heat transfer okay and this uh, uh, parameter can be actually uh, non dimensionalized in terms of the nusselt number now nusselt number can be of two types one is if you try to see uh, if you have a flat plate what happens in case of flat plate initially fluid is too cold so initially we have high heat transfer coefficient and then slowly slowly thermal boundary layer starts developing and value of heat transfer coefficient decreases as we move along the boundary layer towards the fully developed design okay so in a similar approach uh, we will be finding that at each and every location along the sphere so if you consider your angular location something like this so this is the upstream flow direction and then we are shifting the angle wise direction so of course heat transfer coefficient will not be having the same value at each and every point of the sphere so heat transfer coefficient will be having different values at different points along the sphere so if i calculate the value at a particular location so that we will be calling as nothing but our local nusselt number and if i take average of this entire local variation over the complete sphere then i will be calling it as average space averaged nusselt number because surface average we are doing the point, uh, averaging of variation of uh, nusselt number at the surface of the sphere okay so what i am doing over here i am presenting actually the local nusselt number so it means nusselt number i am calculating is will be different for different different angular locations okay so in this case you can see this nusselt number data is with the angle theta okay and all these points are nothing but the experimental measurements so here you can see whenever the flow is just approaching the sphere corresponding to that value of nusselt number is high and as we are moving along the angular direction then value of actually nusselt number is decreasing okay so this observation is quite obvious because whenever flow is just entering at the point then it will be having zero boundary layer at the uh, stagnant point this particular point okay and after this point boundary layer temperature boundary layer will start actually growing so once the boundary layer thickness will be increasing we will be finding there will be decrease in heat transfer coefficient is this one clear and correspondingly it is seen in terms of nusselt number so we have decrease of the nusselt number then once we have reached this separation point theta s slightly after the separation point minimum value of nusselt number is achieved and after that what will be happening now the boundary layer will be broken because flow separation has occurred so now we will be having formulation of circulation eddies so these circulation eddies will try to break the thermal boundary layer and again there will be increase in the value of nusselt number is this one clear so one important point is that local minima in nusselt number is observed slightly after the occurrence of this 
thickness. Okay. And one more thing you can observe along with these lines which are connecting these uh, dots, the best fit of the dots, there are some dashed lines also drawn over here. So dashed lines are nothing but represents the theoretical value of an assault number which is predicting uh, predicted from boundary layer approximation. Okay. So this, if you recall for a flat plate boundary layer, if you are having a heated plate and then you have to predict the assault number, then you have Paul Hausen solution. Okay, so as per the Paul Hausen solution, depending upon the uh, this fully developed uh, uh, thermal boundary layer, we can predict the value of heat transfer coefficient. So similar way, if I can, uh, what I can do, I can apply the boundary layer predictions for estimation of velocity and after that once the velocities are known then I can simply calculate the uh, correspondingly approximated energy equation, temperature equation in order to predict the temperature profile and once we are able to predict the temperature profile we can calculate the corresponding value of local mass rate number. Okay. Now one important point is because I am saying that these dashed lines are corresponding to the boundary layer solution. So that is why we have some important observations. The observation is that these dashed lines are only plotted up to point theta s because we have presence of boundary layer region only up to theta s. After that what we will be having? We will be having the separation of the boundary layer and that is why we will be having actually fluctuations. Is this point clear? All are clear with this idea why we are plotting boundary layer solution only up to theta s. And then if you see, so here the Reynold number values were in the smaller range. When you increase the Reynold number value corresponding to that, you can see these are the different values of the Nusselt number. So overall trend is similar, but at extremely large value of Reynold number, you can see you are having occurrence of actually two minimas. Okay. So, one is this, this is the absolute minima and after this point then you have one more minima. Okay. So that is because when the flow is going to very extremely high Reynolds number then your separation point is actually shifting after 90 degrees. So because of the shift of separation point after 90 degrees you can see your separation, uh, your boundary layer separation is actually occurring after 90 degrees therefore first local minima is actually appearing after the angle of 90 degrees. Okay. And second important point is the presence of this turbulent resign, what will it do? It will create, uh, once the separation point is shifted, the separation bubble is actually shifted towards the rear world side. Okay. So once the stagnant, uh, it is coming very close to the rear stagnant point, it will try to actually attach for longer duration near the backward portion. So that will be leading to occurrence of a, another uh, this one second minima because separation bubble is attached to the sphere for slightly longer duration. Okay. Then again heat transfer coefficient because uh, all these observations though these are presented in terms of the Reynold number. So obviously whenever we are talking about the Reynold number the diameter of the particle is automatically included into the definition of Reynold number in non-dimensional form. Okay. But uh, what we can do we can also present this type of analysis even for more generic situation. So this is shown here for solid particles which are falling in air at 20 degrees Celsius and this heat transfer coefficient is actually plotted as function of the particle diameter. Okay. And also we have density difference, density of the particle and density of the surrounding medium is also plotted over here. So here you can see depending upon the density difference when your density value is actually increasing then your heat transfer coefficient is reaching the higher value for the same value of diameter. Is this point clear? And uh, upon increasing the diameter, the heat transfer coefficient has actually increased. Is this point clear? Now we will be talking about specifically the fluid spheres. So few 
things we need to consider over here whenever we will be talking about the fluid sphere. So our first assumption is that now particles are not rigid. Particles are actually flexible, so they can have some internal circulation present within the spherical sea. Second important point is as the title of the lecture itself says that flow around sphere past uh, uh, flow around spheres. Okay. So it means that even when we are talking about the fluid particles, we have to consider the range of Reynolds number in which the shape of particle remains spherical. So if you recall from our earlier uh, uh, lectures, we have discussed one of the generic diagram in between Reynolds number, Yedvos number and Morton number. And that particular diagram tells us that if my Reynolds number is greater than 600, then inertia will be so strong that shape of the particle cannot remain spherical and it will be changing into ellipsoid or other wobbly seems like structures. Okay. So over here we are talking about only the analysis which is applicable for spherical particles. So that is why whatever the range of Reynolds number I will be covering in this analysis that will be varying from 1 to 600. Is this point clear? So you have to make one clear distinction whatever the analysis we have studied in the previous two lectures that particular analysis is applicable for the entire range of Reynolds numbers varying from 1 to infinity because solid particles will always remain spherical irrespective of the value of the Reynolds number. On contrary for Fluid particles, what will be happening if Reynolds number is going above than 600, then shape will not stay as spherical. And we are trying to do the analysis only for the spherical shape. So that is why our range of Reynolds number is limited from 1 to 600. And we are not going below 1 because below 1 we have more simplified solution available, which is the solution of the repeat flow. So that is why we need not to go for Reynolds number less than 1. So that solution we have already calculated. Okay. Then, in this range, uh, we will not be having any significant deformation, so shape will stay almost spherical. Now, also we have to remember one point that typically we have seen from the creeping flow discussion that within the spherical particles we are having presence of some internal rolls. Okay, and these internal vortices dies down when the viscosity of the particle becomes significant. This is something which we have studied earlier. And second point, these rolls also dies down when there is significant presence of surfactant on the gas liquid interface. Okay. And once the rolls are dying down, then within the fluid particle also, we will be having actually kind of rigid like situation that all the fluid particles will remain almost at their corresponding shapes and whole fluid particle body will move like a rigid sphere. Okay. If internal circulations are avoided within the particle. So that is why there are two conditions. So where we can see that uh, fluid circulations will uh, this internal circulation will be having the smaller magnitude within the fluid spheres and these conditions are higher value of k which is nothing but particle viscosity by surrounding fluid viscosity. Okay. So if particle fluid viscosity is high then the internal uh, circulation will not generate within the particle and second condition is surface contamination. So if surface contamination is also present then also internal circulations will be dying down and we will be finding that Part, fluid particles will all also almost behave like rigid solid particles and there whatever the analysis we have predicted for the solid particles in the previous two lectures same will be applicable. Is this point clear? But if we talk about water drops, presence of water drops in air and then if we plot the drag curve CD versus Reynolds number curve. Then we will be finding that this curve will closely follow the rigid spheres up to a Reynolds number of 200 and corresponding particle diameter of close to 0.85 mm. Okay. Because typically we will be finding that 
in a contaminated system water one can be contamination so contamination will try to decrease the surface tension and second thing is if you calculate the ratio of viscosity is mu p by mu for water so air is having very low viscosity and water is having higher viscosity so this ratio is actually very high close to i think 55 or 56 okay so because of that this internal circulation will be actually diminishing within the uh, liquid drop of water so that's why water drop will behave almost like the solid particle okay and another important point is of course like we have uh, seen that boundary layer solution is applicable for solid spheres in a similar way boundary layer solution will be applicable for fluid spheres also okay though in case of fluid spheres there will be presence of internal circulation so what was the boundary condition for solid sphere at the interface for solid sphere at the interface the boundary condition was no slip but if you have a fluid sphere present then we know that within the fluid sphere i will be having formation of internal circulation so what this internal circulation will cause this internal circulation will lead to some velocity at the interface so that's why at the interface we will not be having zero velocity but we will be having certain value of velocity so it means that if you see so we have now different situation than a solid sphere so in case of a solid sphere the fluid layer surrounding fluid layer is completely coming into the rest whenever it is at the gas liquid interface but for a fluid sphere it is having some motion because of the internal circulation so the way boundary layer will be forming on a fluid particle will be different in comparison to the way boundary layer is forming on a solid particle how differently typically in case of a solid particle the thickness of the boundary layer will be more whereas in case of solid particles uh, so in case of fluid particle the boundary layer thickness will be slightly smaller okay so because of this uh we can apply boundary layer analysis for this system also but it will be uh, applicable for renold number greater than 50 okay because for low renold number what happens we have seen from flat plate case also for low renold number what happens we have formation of a thick boundary layer so once we have formation of a thick boundary layer and bend of streamline is large then approximation of boundary layer is actually not accurately applicable okay okay so now uh, once we will be determining the solution so of course uh, because the uh, boundary layer analysis for fluid particles is it bit challenging because of the presence of the internal circulation so that's why boundary layer analysis is actually done very less for the fluid particle so most of the findings which we will be talking about either these will be experimental or drawn from the numerical okay and in terms of numerical simulations already we have seen in the previous lecture that for a spherical system in terms of using the uh, stream vorticity method my governing equations will be something like this so this will be one equation okay then second equation will be this and where definition of e square in spherical coordinate system will be like this and r is r by a so now i need to supply the boundary conditions so already we have supplied the boundary conditions in the previous lecture for a solid body okay for a solid particle once we have a fluid particle governing equations are same because we have again the spherical system but only thing is we will be having change in the boundary conditions so now can you tell me what will be our new boundary conditions for this system which boundary conditions will be changing or do we have Uh, some additional boundary conditions yes so in solid sphere we were having no slip boundary condition so we will not have no slip but instead of no slip of course we will have no slip condition but it will not be zero velocity condition okay in place of no slip we will be having that close to the interface whatever is tangential velocity in the continuous fluid side same tangential velocity will be there in the particle side so no slip is existing but it is a 
non zero velocity so that is first change and do we require some additional conditions so from the previous boundary conditions one change is correctly identified that whatever the no slip condition was earlier giving zero velocity now in place of zero that will be equal to the velocity of particle so what is second condition yes second condition is we have to also balance the tangential as well as the normal forces at the interface okay so let me give you the detailed set of boundary conditions so if you recall yesterday we have talked about two boundary conditions that at theta equal to 0 and uh, pi which are representing the two stagnant points we have psi at z is equal to 0 then second boundary condition was r equal to 1 r equal to 1 is nothing but surface of the particle at particle surface we will be having psi equal to 0 so this is coming from the normal velocity boundary condition because no streamline can pass through the boundary so the body within uh, so substance within the body and outside the body is remaining same so normal velocity is actually same so that's why that is resulting in psi equal to 0 and third point is tangential velocity for both cases will be same so that's why if you recall in case of solid sphere i wrote earlier that del psi by del r is equal to 0 that was coming from the zero velocity condition now i am writing del psi by del r is equal to del psi p by del r it means whatever i will be having tangential velocity outside same will be tangential velocity within the particle okay and when r is approaching to infinity corresponding to that psi by r square will be half sin square theta and z will be approaching to zero because at far away from the interface i will be having a uniform velocity there will not be any gradient of the velocity present so if there is no gradient of the velocity at far away from the object then vorticity will be zero because vorticity only comes because of the presence of the resistance between the fluid layers gradients between the fluid layers okay then two additional boundary conditions which we have seen in our earlier discussion also this is the condition of balance of tangential forces is this one clear so this is the balance of tangential forces along the interface and this particular balance is corresponding to the contaminant free interface if you have contaminant present then you will be having some additional term okay which will be accounting for gradient of surface tension along the so this is for a contaminant free system okay so contamination is not present and then the one additional boundary condition will be nothing but our pressure uh, normal forces boundary condition so this is normal pressure and this is normal stress because of the viscous effect so normal component of the deviatoric stress tensor is this one clear and of course this will be balanced by the surface tension forces okay so these two additional boundary conditions will come when we will be shifting from solid to a fluid sphere okay so this slide is nothing but again on these equations revision from the previous discussion of creeping flow because there boundary conditions were same only change was in equation Where, where? R tends to theta. R tends to theta. Where it is written? So, R approaches to infinity. Yes. Yes. No. U square by two sin square theta was when psi was written in dimensional form. Now psi is in non-dimensional form. So it is already capital U is already included in the capital psi because now we are writing capital psi a non-dimensional form of equation. Okay. Is this one clear? No. So, because 
that is the effect of molecular adhesion okay so what happens if you have say a pool of water or canal of water and water is flowing in that canal and above that canal air is flowing so what will you say whatever the air layer which is in immediate contact with the water that will be having same velocity as that of the free surface of the water because of the adhesion condition okay is this point clear so now we will be talking about different features so of course whatever the flow features i will be discussing over here these are nothing but based on the solution of these set of equations is this point clear and in the previous lecture i also asked you people to try solving this system of equations for a cartesian system anyone started solving even i told you if you don't want to write a computer code just try it on pen and paper because finite difference approximation is all of you know and uh, simply i told what schemes you have to follow okay so please do that once you will be doing that then you will be getting the more proper feeling okay so uh, all this analysis i will be actually uh, considering based on the previous discussion like solution of the previous set of equations and second important point is majority of the things we have already discussed for the solid particles so we will try to only discuss the key features which represents the differences from the rigid particles okay so first point is presence of internal circulation delays the onset of flow separation and vague formation in external fluid so there is one important uh, uh, topic of uh, advanced fluid mechanics subject of advanced fluid mechanics so in advanced fluid mechanics majority of the time we talk about the uh, systems or methods required for delaying the flow separation okay so if you see typically in terms of solid objects if we want to delay the flow separations then normally two famous approaches are done one approach is we provide small small holes on the solid particles and through these holes we spray fluid at extremely high velocity okay so when we spray the fluid that fluid will try to actually reduce the effect of adverse pressure effect okay so that is one approach and second approach which typically is followed to uh, delay the flow separation is use rotation so if you have a solid body start rotating the solid body so if you start rotating the solid body you will be finding that now here you will not be having zero velocity but fluid layer will be having certain velocity certain tangential value of velocity so that tangential value of velocity will try to keep the fluids closer to the surface for little bit more longer duration more longer angular duration so this is one of the uh, predominant methods for reducing the flow separation or for delaying the flow separation in case of solid bodies okay so that's why in case of fluid flows what will be happening in case of fluid flows we are having presence of internal circulations so this internal circulation will try to shift the separation point in the backward direction is this point clear so because of that we say that internal fluid circulation this will delay the onset of separation and vague formation in the external fluid and second point is if we talk about spherical rain drops in air so spherical rain drops in air is having k value close to 55 and gamma equal to 790 what is gamma ratio of densities rho p by so for water air system under atmospheric conditions uh, gamma will be yes not specific gravity here it is used for the ratio of densities okay so ratio of densities density of particle divided by density of the surrounding so Uh, this value is 790 and k is 
55. So value of k is high. So that's why whatever the wave formation and separation features we will be finding, these will be very close to the one which we have seen in case of solid spherical particles. Okay. On contrary, if we have recirculating eddies, so these for fluid particles in the range of 20 to 100 are completely detached from the surface. So in case of solid spheres, we have seen that if I have a solid sphere, once my flow separation is happening, behind the flow separation I am having a big roll which keeps on recirculating at this particular stagnant location, particularly in the range of 20 to 100 or even 20 to 400 because after 400 we have seen the detachment of the rolling structure from the sphere what we call is vortex setting so vortex setting has appeared for solid particles once the whole number was greater than 400 okay but in case of uh, these drops or uh, bubbles like fluid particles you will be finding that even in the range of 20 to 100 because 20 was the condition at which the formation of smallest wake starts appearing. So these wakes will be actually immediately leaving the surface. These will not stay behind the surface. So there will be one roll formation, it will leave and then another roll formation. Okay. So separation of flow outside the sphere, it does not necessarily imply formation of a secondary internal vortex. This point is important. When we are saying that flow is separating, from a fluid particle, okay. So there is a formation of roll in outside fluid. So within the fluid, corresponding to separation point, there can be internal circulation or there cannot be internal circulation because roll formation takes place even for spherical particles as well. So like rigid solid particles as well, okay. Then if you have a gas bubble in a liquid, or a droplet for which k will be 1. So if you have comparable viscosities okay, and gamma is 0.5, in that case and if you have uncontaminated system, then no separation is predicted for even very high removal numbers close to 2. Is this point clear? So if viscosities of the two fluids, internal fluid and surrounding fluids are comparable. So if viscosity of the two fluids are comparable, then what will be happening? Whatever motion or whatever angle change can happen within the fluid, same change of angle can easily take place in outside fluid also. So in that case, flow will be remaining separated, uh, sorry, flow will be remaining unseparated to very large values of the removal number close to 200. Okay. Is this point clear? So when viscosity ratio is high, then flow separation and wake formation is appearing at very low removal number close to 20. But if your viscosity ratios are small, okay, so then both the fluids will be behaving in a similar way viscosity wise. So that is why there whatever the change of angle a streamline can see within the particle, same change of angle a streamline can experience outside the particle because their viscosities are almost the same. And these at this point both are having almost same velocities because of the no slip condition. So that is why the change of angle of streamline for both cases will be almost the same. So because of this separation, flow separation can be delayed even to very large values of renewal number close to 200. Okay. Now these are some uh, findings for comparison of separation angles. Okay. So these are separation angles for renewal number 30, 50, 100 and 300 and these are the separation angles for rigid spheres and these are the separation angles for fluid particles. So if you see in case of fluid particles, two types of separation angles are written. So theta S1 and theta S2. So theta S1 is the angle at which vortex separation starts and theta S2 is the angle that whatever the role is being created 
after like what will be happening in case of fluid particle as i told you that once you have flow separation then whatever the role you are having that role will be immediately leaving the surface but after leaving the surface one end of the role will be in contact with sorry will be close to the surface of the particle and up to whatever angle that is controlling the extent of the particle surface we call that angle as theta s1 is this point clear so theta s1 is the angle at which formation of the roll starts okay it means at which for roll formation is starting but in case of fluid particles roll once formed it immediately leaves behind leaves away from the surface but once it will be growing in its extent though it is away from the surface but it is actually still having some extent of its which is close to the surface so up to whatever angle it is in close to the surface that we are calling as theta s2 so we are defining two angles theta s1 and theta s2 and one important point you can see that with renold number our value of separation angle is decreasing for both cases which is consistent but for rigid sphere this value is actually decreasing with yes decreasing with increasing renold number for both cases but the change the decrease of value is actually significant for rigid spheres and less for raindrops so this confirms our point that in case of fluid particles the separation delays okay in comparison to that of solid particles and second important observation is if you see this lw by d so lw by d is nothing but length of the wake with non dimensionalized with diameter of the particle so lw by d is also smaller for uh, raindrops in comparison to lw by d for solid particles okay and typically you can see this graph of surface vorticity so surface vorticity for a rigid sphere is given by this curve a and surface vorticity of water drop is almost following the same nature as that of a rigid sphere so this is because in case of rain drop also sorry in case of water drop in here also our viscosity ratio is high so if viscosity ratio is high internal circulation is small so if internal circulation is small almost it will be behaving like a rigid solid then if i have liquid drop with viscosity ratio equal to 1 so in that case you can see the changes in vorticity field are actually very small and one more important point in rigid sphere case this vorticity was becoming negative near the rear stagnant point so it means the meaning of negative vorticity is you are having the formation of a roll but here vorticity value is not going in the negative direction it means the roll formation has actually decreased so separation is not taking place is this one clear so as i told you when your k will be 1 then separation will be delaying up to renold number of 200 and here this curve is corresponding to a renold number of 100 so it means here separation has delayed a lot so we don't have any change in sign of the body speed so it means there is no formation of eddy okay or break and if you talk about gas bubble so of course the viscosity of the gas bubble will be very small in comparison to the surrounding liquid fluid so k is zero and also density of the gas will be very small in comparison to the surrounding liquid so that's why k and gamma are close to zero so when k and gamma are close to zero then your magnitude of overall viscosity is decreasing and your situation is almost becoming more symmetric so it is going towards a completely symmetric flow situation so whatever the change of angle of streamline is happening here almost same change of angle will be happening in the streamline for uh, rear world direction is this one clear so almost a symmetric situation 
in liquid drop particle is liquid and continuous phase is gas in case of gas bubble particle is gas and continuous phase is surrounding liquid okay when we go for so the second feature is internal circulation so we have seen the presence of internal circulation so at high renold number the stagnation ring in the internal fluid shifts forward of the okay so you have seen that at creeping flow what was happening at creeping flow we were having formation of this type of rolls so symmetric roll structures if our fluid is contaminant free okay but in this case what will be happening if say flow is approaching in upward direction this will be my equator so major portion of this ring will start try to attain above the equator okay then we have for renold number greater than 300 if we have water drops present in air a small secondary internal vortex in opposite sense may occur inside the fluid sphere near the rear stack so typically for water drops if circulations are present you may experience that this is in forward direction one small secondary roll may appear in the reverse direction near the rear end if your re is greater than 300 okay so big roll will be broken and a small roll will also start appearing at the backward portion of the drop so these are typical internal circulations so first you can see the presence of streamlines so this is the streamline presence within the fluid particle and this side we have nothing but surface vorticity so here you can see in this portion value of surface vorticity is actually changing so up to this point your contours of surface vorticity are aligned in one direction and after this point your contour is aligned in reverse direction okay so that is something which you can see over here so when your angle is changing from 0 to so this is the angle after this point what is happening vorticity for this case is actually going in negative direction surface vorticity is going in negative direction so it means and this has happened for a renold number of so renold number of 300 or above 300 what you can see so this negative vorticity over here shows that you may have formation of a secondary roll something like this in the reverse direction is this point clear all are clear with this idea and if your renold number is less than 300 like 100 30 10 then in every case you have the positive vorticity it means your this vorticity field will be remaining in same direction and this will be extending something like this and this single roll will be extending up to the top okay but once renold number is going greater than 300 300 or greater than 300 then we will be having formation of negative vorticity surface vorticity near the rear portion and we will be having formation of a smaller roll in the opposite direction okay and uh, one important thing you can see that when your renold number is approaching to zero then you are entering towards nothing but had merged ravinsky solution so which is corresponding to a creeping process okay in contamination free system okay then similarly you can see the presence of circulation outside also so outside and uh, you have to recall that these streamlines are drawn corresponding to renold number of 100 okay so outside if you see outside the sphere this is the formation of a roll and here this is the value of what is okay and all these are for presence of water drop in air so for which k is 55 and gamma is 790 so almost all the results are identical to that of the sphere the only change is we will be having actually presence of internal circulations which will slightly delay the separation point and 
these internal roles will also having generation of secondary secondary internal roles in the opposite direction at high Reynolds number particularly for Reynolds number greater than 300 which were absent when we were talking about the creeping flow situation okay so in case of creeping flow situations roles were in the similar direction and the roles were uniformly distributed along the entire drop then if we talk about the surface pressure and drag so of course the knowledge of surface pressure is important because uh, it ultimately controls the form drag okay so in terms of surface pressure we have four different lines so line a is corresponding to the potential flow theory so in case of potential flow we will be having 100 percent pressure recovery then line b is corresponding to rigid sphere so this is the line of rigid sphere okay this particular one and line c is for water drop in air and B and C are almost coinciding with each other. So it means that here pressure change is also almost the same. Okay. And then if you see D, so D is a gas bubble for which K and gamma is 0. So in terms of gas bubble, your pressure recovery is more in comparison to that of a solid sphere. Is this one clear? So it means that if you have a high viscosity ratio in between the particle and the surrounding fluid, then you will be having pressure recovery identical to that of a rigid sphere. On contrary, if your viscosity ratio is very small close to zero, then you will be having more pressure recovery in comparison to that of a sphere. So if you have more pressure recovery over here, you will be having lesser form drag. And moreover, in terms of skin friction drag also, because internal circulation is taking place, so internal circulation will help in drag reduction at the interface as well. So if we have smaller viscosity ratio particles present in the system, then our overall drag will be less in comparison to that of a solid. Is this one clear? So these are the values of drag coefficients for different systems so here you can see this is Reynolds number this is cdp so cdp means cd for pressure drag cdf f means friction drag not form drag form drag and pressure drag are same so skin friction drag and cd means total drag okay so here you can see these numbers are provided for different values of k. So when k is infinity, k is 55.3 and k is equal to 2. So you can see at a given Reynolds number, when value of k is becoming small, then value of cd is also actually decreasing. Is this one clear? So it means fluid particles have lesser drag, fluid particles experience lesser drag in comparison to that of the solid particles and typically for k approaching to 0 Reynolds number greater than 2 all this data can be fitted for total drag can be fitted with this power law relation cd equal to 14.9 times Reynolds number minus 0.78 okay is this point clear and of course Whatever the boundary layer theory we will be applying, whatever the previous results I have discussed, all these were based on the numerical solutions. Okay. Now same analysis for fluid particles can be done based on the boundary layer theory and I already told you that boundary layer theory has some difficulties whenever we apply on fluid particles, uh, particularly for drops. Okay. For drops, your k value will be large okay so because of the large k value we will be finding that internal structures the boundary layer analysis of internal structure becomes complex but for lower value of k because internal structures are actually symmetric so that's why boundary layer approximation analysis is possible so that's why the solution of boundary layer theory is 
applicable only for k values very small than 1, value of gamma less less than 1 and for null numbers very very large than 1. Is this point clear? And if your k values are high, then the internal circulations are difficult to predict. These are more complex because some secondary roles are also formed. Okay. So, their boundary layer approximation cannot be uh, applied with good accuracy. So, that is why boundary layer solutions does not give close results with the experimental data, whatever have been tried in the literature and whatever are tried, these are also very less. Like there are only 2 to 3 studies who try to calculate for that. Okay. So, number of studies in this particular area which are using the boundary layer theory, these are extremely less. Because their range of applicability is actually very narrow. And again the reason is velocity will not be 0 at the interface. So, boundary layer will be behaving in a different way. So, boundary layer is typically thinner and remains attached to the surface. And based on boundary layer analysis, whatever solution people have done, they have proposed different values of CD based on the Renault number. So, one of the solution gives CD equal to 48 by RE, whereas another analysis proposes CD equal to 48 by RE plus few more terms which are functions of Renault number. Okay. And whenever we consider the treatment of liquid drop, then it is complex due to the presence of complex internal circulation. So, their boundary layer analysis is actually not that good. And typically you can see this is one data of drag coefficient for different values of Reynolds number varying from 1 to 10 to power 3. So, 1 to 1000 and in this data all these points nothing but represents the experimental or simulation data. So, you can see few points are filled, filled from inside. These represents experimental data, few data points are open. So, these only show the boundary and inside there is no fill. So, these unfilled symbols represents the simulation data and here you can see these are the different equations CD by RE and this particular line is the second equation. This is number 2, say this is number 1. Okay. So, this is equation number 1 this particular line and this particular line is equation number 2. Okay. And then one more equation is predicted which is equation number 3. So, this is the more generic equation for estimation of CD for fluid spheres uh, and this equation is having one beauty that it accounts for viscosity ratio. Okay. And then B1 and B2 are some functions over here. And the values of B1 and B2 can be obtained from this particular table. So, here you can see depending upon the different values of K into gamma, you can calculate corresponding value of B1 and B2. Okay. And based on this equation, you can also calculate one more factor which is called as circulation factor. We have seen in our earlier creeping flow discussion also, this gamma, capital gamma is nothing but called as circulation factor which is a function of k and gamma and Reynolds number. Okay. So, this equation is more generic which accounts for wide range of viscosity ratios and uh, but the applicability of this equation is for values of k less than 2, re values greater than 50 and this will be accurately applicable if value of circulation factor is greater than 0.25. Is this point clear? Because if circulation factor is less than 0.25, then internal circulation will behave in a different way and these will be almost diminishing and our fluid particles will give results identical to that of the solid particles. Okay. So, this is another uh, interesting uh, understanding and uh, one more point is along with the boundary layer theory, we also uh, we can also see one important point. This particular line over here is the Stokes solution and this particular line over here is corresponding to the rigid spheres. 
So one interesting fact you can say that whenever your Reynolds number is increasing, your value of CD is actually deviating more from the rigid solution, uh, the value of CD for rigid sphere. So the meaning is at high Reynolds number, the value of drag coefficient will be more smaller for fluid particles in comparison to solid sphere. And this is one of the reason because of which whenever we talk about fluid particles at high Reynolds number, we do not consider much the effect of surface contaminants. Okay. Because typically at high Reynolds number what happens, at high Reynolds number if my size of particle is slightly bigger, then flow will be so high that contaminants will not get opportunity to settle at the interface. So that is why effect of contaminants will not be felt much and moreover whatever the effect of contaminant you will be feeling that also if you have higher viscosity ratio there that effect will also diminish because for high viscosity ratio the internal circulations will be dying down and ultimately surfactant will also try to die down the internal circulation and your solution will be approaching more closer to the spherical solution. Okay. So that is why whenever at high and old number internal uh, these uh, if you have to consider the surfactants into account then people will be simply using the limiting case of spherical drag force. Okay. So again for high and old number controlling the surfactant concentration within the system is extremely challenging. So number of studies to study the effect of contaminant at higher uh, Reynolds numbers are actually very very less. And moreover as I told you that contaminants are having predominant effect mostly at smaller Reynolds number because at smaller Reynolds number these can stay very close to the interface and can make significant contribution. On contrary at large Reynolds number they will be because of the circulations and other effects these are actually entering into the continuous phase and these are moved away from the interface in majority cases and their effect are actually very less accounted. And even if in some system it is accounted then the contaminant is only changing the internal circulation. So means internal circulation is avoided if contaminant is present. Then simply we can go for the solution of spherical system. Is this one clear? So that is why uh, contaminants are also very less studied for finite Okay. So now from next lecture onwards we will talk about uh, more deformed shape of fluid particles and particularly we will be talking about the ellipsoidal fluid particles. Okay. And uh, you have seen that the theoretical analysis is not even fully possible for spherical fluid particles. So whenever we will be going for non-spherical particles then system is more complex. So there we have to rely on experimental evidences and the numerical simulations. We will not be able to find the theoretical solutions. Okay. So full theoretical solution of equations will not be possible. Is this one clear? Okay. So tomorrow you have quiz as well and we have class as well.